live in a world full of stories and most of these aren't human stories. They're not human adventures. Uh, and when we look around us, there are stories, there are adventures everywhere. So often my work is about helping people find, find those adventures or find their version of those adventures, their, their experience of those adventures. So for a lot of my work is about celebrating places, everyday places, turning the wood at the end of the street, if you like, or the, the park down, just down the road into a place of wonder and excitement. Um, that I'm there or my work is there to give people time to explore um, and time to play and time to create. And I, I tend to work with children and work with families more than working just with adults. Um, and I find with families, working with children is a really good excuse for parents to then relax and play for themselves. Um, and, and working with families and working with children, we celebrate the little things. And, and that, for me, that's really important because as a storyteller, people often seem to come into things looking for big adventures. They're looking for the hero who's going to save the world, change the world, revolutionize something somewhere. And it's very easy to forget that absolutely everything is having its own adventure. You know, the, the mouse that runs across the grass or the beetle that climbs up and visits a flower, they're having adventures. They're not human adventures. They're not stories that might make any sense at all to us, but they're adventures. And the, the, the tree that grows slowly over 300 years is again, having its own adventure. So that sense of finding adventures, just stopping worrying and just looking at what's around us and getting involved with it, just sinking into it is a lot of what I do, is just uh, let nature surround us or let the everyday world surround us. And within, it, and within that, just giving ourselves time. We, it's, and it's a cliche to always talk about how we live in such a busy world and a world where everything's always dashing about and so on. As I said, it's a cliche. It's also quite true. Um, and for me, again, one of the really fascinating things is watching a group, let's say a group in the case with the photo here of um, 35 overexcited eight-year-olds who'd been dashing about all over the place. They'd got thoroughly excited about this, that, and the next thing. They'd seen things, they'd fallen into stinging nettles, they'd picked up snails. Everything was happening at full speed. Um, and, and then, you know, the, the workshop leader like myself asked them to do something completely different. And you're always wondering and worrying a bit if people will actually do that. And next thing you know, there is complete silence. And if you look round, you just find folk like this young man here sitting with a postcard and a pencil, really busily drawing and writing. And, and for me, that, that's really important, that giving people the freedom to suddenly, or to just let themselves stop, to step out of everything else. And knowing as a workshop leader that when I do that, or when I do that with the group, I have to be prepared to abandon everything else I've got planned, because sometimes that's all that people need to do. And you can find half an hour later, we still have 30 people very busily scribbling on little bits of card. And at one point we were doing one of these and somebody came back and we were sharing people's ideas. And one little boy stood up and declaimed in a completely incomprehensible language, whatever it was he'd been doing. And then he explained to us all, yet he he'd written a story, but he'd written it in tree because that was how he'd heard it. Um, so for me, 
all those things, that sense of celebrating the little things, celebrating everyday places, giving yourself time to be absorbed are all really important. They're all things, they're all the things I do with groups, um, but they're also the things that I do for me and that in, in our context here today might be the things that you're looking for yourself. Um, and I just, I always, I always argue that looking at our own personal creativity one of the most important things is just to give ourselves time is is recognizing the utter deep abiding value of time for personal creativity and it doesn't actually mean that you need to produce anything it just means you give yourself time to sit down and shut up i'm a storyteller for me, actually not talking is quite hard work. So to just go and sit um, beside a pool, in this case, this is a pool in a bog near me. If you actually sat down there, you'd start sinking into the moss, um, which is a, a wonderful experience in itself. But that recognizing the need for that personal creative time is really important. Um, And again, for me as an individual, for me, I, I mean, I'm, I've been saying this session is about stories everywhere. And it is. And, and if we go looking, we go, if we go looking for stories, and I, I think in story terms, whatever your creative avenue is, whether it's you as an artist or you're as, you as a designer or you as a computer programmer, um, for me, I need to talk as a storyteller and a poet, but I just find just giving myself that sort of time to stop and look releases possibilities. So here, you know, the, the shapes and patterns of landscapes give me stories and those, those landscape shapes give me characters um, and excitements to play with. So the the main picture here, or no, the, the sort of monochrome picture is a set of rocks five miles up the road from where I live. And the puppets in, in the curved cutout bit um, all came from working with that same bit of landscape. And for me as a storyteller, they're the people who live underneath those rocks. And some of the big ones are the ones whose nose is in the shape of that rock sticking up out the ground. Um, so I, I, yeah, I find that the spaces where I live, the places where I work, give me the inspiration that I look for in, in, in my work as a storyteller. Um, but even that sort of, it's almost too simple a model. Um, for me, create a lot of creativity is about uh, what is it? It's like a series of conversations, or better still, it's like a series of dances, um, and the creativity is in there. Interaction between the elements of that, if you like, between the partners and the dance. Even if it's me dancing on my own, it's still there's there's an idea that will take shape. And it takes shape and it unfolds, not necessarily along expected lines. So a big bit of creativity for me is just accepting that unexpected is to start dancing and to see where the dance goes rather than saying this is what's going to happen. And at the end of this, I am going to have a story of 500 words and it's going to be about X, Y or Z. Um, the picture here I loved because it was a group of children. We were looking at the park where at uh, the park in the middle of their housing project. And um, there was a great, great big uprooted tree stump and we wanted to find a way of telling its story to visitors 
And we, as as the workshop leaders, were thinking of animals. We thought that we might make lots of little mice or something like that could that could be living in the roots. Um, or we thought there might be we might have a story of the tra the tragic story of the giant tree person who'd collapsed to the ground in a storm. And no, that wasn't what they wanted at all. They wanted mud, said our children. Uh, they needed mud and faces. And these are just two. They covered this tree root with these strange little mud-based faces. And it and when you saw it in the middle of the night, it was quite disturbing. But great fun. So we're back, we're back to just embrace the unexpected. Whatever comes is what comes, and use it even again creatively. To just use use what the moment gives you and don't worry about it if it's not what you thought. Sorry to uh, to interrupt, yeah. Gordon. Just you've got about seven minutes. Yeah, so. I'm sort of watching my clock as well. Yes. Um, what I what I was going to do, folks, now is I'm just going to flick through a couple of suggestions and then stop very quick. I'll do this bit quite quickly and then stop. And um, and if anyone has any questions, just pitch in. Um, so what I was gonna I was gonna suggest suggest um, if you want to find a way of accessing your own, giving your your own creativity a quick boost, things to do. One, just go for a walk. There are stories everywhere. Don't don't go with some big epic somewhere. Just go for a walk. Um, and look at the look at the place you're walking in. Use urban stories. This is the lane on the other side of my road at home and it's this amazing outcrop of rock that you just find hidden away behind the houses so embrace urban stories go for a walk embrace urban stories be open to possibilities just look you never know what you're going to see if you start looking and then within all that or with all that just almost for goodness sake stop and be still and relax and go deeper, just let it all sink in around you. And trust, trust yourself almost more than anything. Just let a moment, a place, let a season fill you and, and, and let it happen. Be gentle with yourself. The, another annoying contradiction be gentle with yourself but be disciplined know that you might need to get something out at the end of this but it's all right if nothing actually happens you never know what seeds you plant when you just sit and look at something for long enough you'd never know what seeds are being planted in your own imagination and they might take like an oak tree they might take a couple of hundred years hopefully not that long to germinate but they might take a while but just let the world around you fill you um, and take what the world gives you. And um, I won't go into it all because we're really tight on time, but there's a lovely um, principle from, there. there is an idea that in the Norse mythologies and the Norse stories that people tell, trolls come up as sort of monsters. But when you actually unpick what's being said in, in the sagas, it looks like a, to be a troll is actually to be, a, to be in a state of mind and that almost anyone can become a troll because a troll, well, to be a troll was to be in a state of enchantment. And the same root that gives you troll, it's argued also gives you thrall, which is to be a, uh, in, in ownership of, to be being owned by someone. But it also gives us the word enthrall, um, and which is to be in a state of wonder, to be captured by a thought. And um, I don't know, as I said, I don't know if the etymology actually works. But I always argue one of the biggest ways of finding stories and one of the biggest things to do to feed your own creativity is to become your own troll, is to let yourself be enchanted by the places around you and just give yourself time and peace to sit down and see what stories the world will share with you. And this wonderful tree that's standing there with its arms up 
its mouth open, telling its own story, is in a, a beautiful park in the south of England, in London, um, in Richmond Park. And this is one of one of its their grandparent trees, um, a good old grandmother of an oak tree that's probably nearly a thousand years old. And and I think it's always good to finish with a grandparent. So I'm going to close the share here and stop rambling. I said, I'm a storyteller. It's quite hard to get me to stop talking. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I'd be really happy to try and answer them. And if I've been very organized, let's just see. No, I didn't. Um, I'll post, I'll put my blog and my email in the share and um, you can always catch me afterwards. Thank you. Yeah, any questions, put yeah. them in the chat. That was uh, that was really interesting. I, I very much enjoyed that. So if you've got any questions, I can see a few people typing. Stick them in the chat. And uh, yeah. There you go. And there's my emails there and my blog uh, link. And they, they are the best places to catch me generally. Um, you can also just look up Creeping Toad and there's a website. But the blog is where things update most regularly. Here you go, do, you've got a question. Yeah. Do you want to read them out or what should we do? Uh, yeah, I can read them too. Yeah, well. uh, so story finding and helping our work on creative projects. What did you think the links are? Straight down. I'm not really sure. I'm not even sure. It's Susan, isn't it? I'm not even sure that I really understand what you mean. What you mean? Um, yeah. Do you want to expand that a little bit, Susan? If I can said, unmute myself. Oh, yes. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking was in the introduction. You talked about computer programmers and people mm -hmm. who work mm -hmm. in a perhaps more structured, um, creative world. And I wondered if you could trace, because I can think of several ways that the techniques you described might trigger creative. You know, if, if we're stuck on a creative project, mm. We go for a walk and find prod stories. Uh -huh. Then we go back to our desk. What's different? What might be different? How does the what should people or could people expect that having found the story might change for them? Uh, well, I think when you go going back to your desk as it were is you one make sure you take this take the trouble is i i tend to think in stories so i for me there's always stories moving around um it's it's taking it's almost taking a quality and it quality of an experience with you rather than rather than coming back to the challenge in front of you whatever it was with a definite answer what i would hope people could find is Oh, is a quality, is a feeling, is saying, yeah, I, I need that dynamism, I need to hold on to that, or, and it's creativity, it doesn't really fit into anyone's neat packages, and I think it's that, it's, we're back to accepting the unexpected, and the unexpected is, is as much in ourselves as in anything that's happening around us, um, and so that's the bit about being gentle and being disciplined. You just think, oh, right, I want to, how, do, if I'm doing X, how do I hold on to the peacefulness that I felt by that pond? Or how do I hold on to the sheer vibrant activity of, um, of, of, of a pond, of a pond full of beetles and tadpoles? Um, and so maybe it's thinking in metaphors. And thinking, how do how do I bring a, how do I apply a metaphor to what I'm doing at home? Or how do I look? I've just come out of a system a, a session. We were talking about ecosystems of interactions, and it's that same sort of sense of just um, every things relate to each other, and how and 
it will depend on individual projects what the what their relationship will be. Thank you.